Welcome to Medical Sales Live, the number one resource for breaking into medical sales and building your career. Hello, everyone. My name is John Akers. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for the Medical Sales College, and we'd like to welcome you to another edition of Medical Sales Live. Hey, today in the studio, we got James Watkins, National Marketing Manager with Watchman with Boston Scientific. Let me tell you, anytime James is in the house, it's a great day, my man. <laughs> Good to see you, my man. Great to see you too, James. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for joining us, James. James has got a, a, a great story. James, why don't you share with us what you were doing prior to you know your working experience post, uh, post-college? post Sure. Uh, well, for me, I, I grew up, as you grew up in a rural area of West Virginia, I grew up in a rural area of, in, in Alabama and was fortunate enough to be able to receive athletic scholarship at Vanderbilt University. So when I was there, I actually received a, a grad and undergrad and then uh, actually played for the Jacksonville Jaguars for a short time. So after uh, playing football, when I really just kind of called it quits, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. So my first really real job out after you know sports was me working at a YMCA, really trying to figure out what I want to do as a next step. Always had an interest in health and healthcare, but didn't know which route I wanted to take. So I actually went back to Nashville after being in Florida for some time, and I went to a career fair at Vanderbilt, and I met a lot of different people, a lot of different companies were represented, but I saw someone in pharmaceuticals because I heard that was a great career to get into, and I really just bugged the guy. After he took my resume, I, I, I called him and, and emailed him months after we initially met to see what type of opportunities that were out there potentially for me. But during that time period, I was really doing a job I knew wasn't going to be a long-term career choice for me, that being at the YMCA. So he didn't just hire you on the spot? He did not hire <laughs> me on the spot. You know, it's, it's funny because... He should have. Okay. <laughs> you're right. But the, 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 the funny thing about that is, is I didn't even realize I was learning a life lesson in regards to what it takes to do well in this industry, just being persistent because... You know, he, he took my resume. I, I came to the, the, the career fair I actually dressed up in a suit, right? Maybe not a vest, but I had a suit on that day. And most of the people in the, at the career fair didn't have, uh, you know, they weren't dressed to the nines. But he took my resume. He, he wrote a little check on it. So I was thinking, okay, that's probably a good thing. And he said, reach out to me, meaning me initiate with him. And I did exactly that. But he never called me back. But after weeks and weeks and months and months, Finally, he, he opened the door for me to potentially have an interview, which I ended up getting an interview. But the persistence is what I learned through that experience. And, you know, it's interesting you share that story, James. And you had uh, you went to one of the most prestigious universities in the country at Vandy with sure. not only an undergrad, but a graduate degree there. Um, a career, a storied career in athletics, um, in, in varsity sports there and a career in the NFL. And you were not hired immediately. You still had yeah. to really be persistent for that. That's, uh, that's, that's really an interesting story. From the time that I first started calling this person to me actually getting the job, it easily was one year. Wow. Yeah. wow. Easily was a year. Gotcha. If not more. Yeah. Okay. Maybe just maybe 14 months. And that was a, that was a sales opportunity with them, Yes, correct? it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So tell us about that. How long were you there? What were you doing? What were some of the successes you had? Yeah. So my time in pharmaceuticals was about five years. Okay. And uh, it, I'd had no idea what I was doing at first, but because of that, that actually was a good thing because I took everything literally and I read everything I was supposed to read. I, you know, attended the classes I was supposed to attend and, and, and followed the script. I would say, the thing that I realized early on was sales is not sales. Meaning, in my mind, I, I picture sales as if you remember the show Married with Children, Al Bundy, mm -hmm. right? I'm thinking, I don't want to sell anything. That's so like, ew. Like, why would I want to be a part of sales? But I realized over time that it's just a, a trusted transfer of information. And if you're taught how to transfer information, you're selling. You just don't realize you're selling. Maybe they don't either. But you grow your business from that trusted transfer of information. And that's something I did learn early on in pharmaceuticals in the sales process. So you were in pharma for five years. Yes. Um, that begs the question, why didn't you stay in pharma? Well, and I'm not trying to make myself be bigger than what I am, but as I started doing the job, I realized that I could do more. And one thing that I do remember one time was being in an office in August, wearing a suit and waiting to see a physician waiting and waiting and waiting. And someone with scrubs came in and walked right to the back 
and saw the staff, saw the physician, seeing a patient, I'm assuming at the time was probably programming a patient <clears throat> if they were a, a pacemaker defibrillator rep. And I felt like that's the business I need to be in because they had access. They were greeted with, it was just a level up that I didn't, that I didn't have. And that made me realize I need to probably make a switch. So I went to monster.com and I submitted my name, submitted my resume, and I received a call back in about two weeks. And actually it was from Boston Scientific. The recruiter was representing Boston Scientific for a job in neuromodulation. And I ended up getting that job. And then that really started my med device career. But I know that story is, is probably something that's in the minority because most people don't get a hit immediately when they submit their information on websites like that. Very true. I, I would also submit, James, that it could have been the reason you've got that hit so quickly is because you know you did have that experience, right? I mean, think about it. You took you a year to get into pharma, sure. and then after five years of successful selling in pharma, you've got something to offer at that point, right? I mean, right. You, you had a skill set, you had the business background from your education, and now you've got real life work experience, sales experience, you know, selling in the medical sales arena that that Boston looked at and that uh, was appealing to them. So certainly Monster was a was a conduit at that point, but you would teach yourself up for success. You know, as you look forward in your career, James, what what's what are your career aspirations and uh, where do you see yourself as you move forward? Yeah, so John, thank you for asking me that. I I answer this question with, with a with a thought first. Someone said something to me early on in my career, and I won't say their name because I don't want to I don't want to embarrass them, but uh, it, it stuck with me. And they told me that you should have a bigger vision for yourself. And even when they told me at the time, I didn't really appreciate what they said. So as time passed, I start to appreciate who I was as an individual more, and the impact I can have in a territory in a region for a company. And I surrounded myself around more people who were, had a bigger vision for their career. So to answer your question in short, I will be a president one day in a division. I believe it. Yeah, I, without I, a doubt. I believe it. That, that is my ultimate goal. And, and obviously that's, and it's, it's hard to fathom when you first start off in sales of these opportunities. And I, I like the way you phrase that, that it, it's not just a, a job, it's really as you begin to um, invest in your career that you move into sales leadership and now into marketing management and other touch points to round you out and educate you to be a be better business leader uh, uh, of, of a division so that one day you can take the realm, the realm and, the, and the reins of, of president to lead yourself. Sure. Uh, you've come a long way and done an amazing job thus far, for sure. Thank you. But I've had a lot of help along the way also. Absolutely. We Without all have. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. So as you think about you know the the help that you've had, it, it begs the question as well, James. How many people have come to you throughout these years that you've been in the business and ask you, how do I become James Watkins? How do I you know how do I step in and and you know and enjoy a career in medical sales like you have? Yeah, I don't know if they've they've necessarily said how do I become James Watkins, but <laughs> <laughs> they've asked me how do I you know have a job like yours. I've been asked that question so many times, I probably, you know, I don't have a number. It's been so numerous. And what I would do, I would answer by saying, have business to business sales experience, work for uh, Xerox, work for uh, payroll companies like ADP, or something like that, you know, wine and spirits, Gallo, to show that you can have, uh, you have the ability to go out and, and make it happen, put up numbers, and then that can help you transition into potentially med device. Personally, my route was pharmaceuticals first, but I think, and we, even one of the reasons we're having this conversation is the way of doing things in the past is, is, is changing. And, and to shorten that, that curve and to take away some of the time, it makes sense for people to be aware of opportunities like medical sales college, because in my career, I wish I could go back and, and shorten some of the time that I had to learn what I wanted to do to figure out uh, my route. This opportunity that you all here promote is fantastic because it helps someone shorten the time, gain clinical experience, and also gain sales tactics and experience so they will be uh, of value to a potential customer in the future. 
Yeah, it's it's one of the things that we always heard is we recruited people with business backgrounds. You know, we all also wanted that clinical experience. Yes. Right. And then what did you say to the person who was coming out of the hospital that had the clinical experience? Well, they haven't had any business or sales experience. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, exactly. And, and so there's always the, the either or. It's one or the other. Um, and, and then when you're fresh out of school, right, you don't have either. <laughs> exactly. Right? And it makes you, it even you, tougher. You work at a YMCA. <laughs> there, there, there you go. There you go. But eventually you get to where you need to be. Right? True. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's what we've tried to do, James, obviously, is that, you know, through these years is we've tried to really bring and shorten that learning curve, shorten that curve into the business. Because uh, as what we've always said, it's not only what you know, it's who you know. And, and at the Medical Sales College, you know, our goal is to provide both um, graduates with all the skill sets they need to step into the industry and be successful once they enter. Um, but on the back side of that is creating that bridge to relationships and hiring managers to make sure that they get hired in a very timely manner upon graduation, um, which is certainly a benefit, I think, to all of us. I completely agree. So, James, I know that at Boston, too, you know, you've had a passion for um, r really leadership and, and really, I, I think, mentoring, um, you know, other minorities in Boston Scientific, as well as, you know, um, minorities outside of Boston Scientific, helping them to enter the business, sure. and enter the medical device business. Uh, we are very excited about our DEI scholarship program in partnership with the Medical Sales College in Boston Scientific. I would love for you just to share with the audience a little bit about your passion, um, you know, for the work that you've done and, um, you know, what your vision of the future is. Yeah, I, this is really important and, and it, it's always been important, but I think it's come to the forefront over the past um, 20 months. I think that oftentimes, you know, you know, companies are better when they have a diverse set of employees. And diversity can be more than just ethnicity or race, but companies are better when you have multiple people feeling like their ideas will be heard. And one of the things that I realized early on in my career was oftentimes what people see, they believe. And when you never see anyone who thinks or acts or looks like you, sometimes it's easy for you not to believe in yourself because you're so different from the masses. So I think in this business, there are so many avenues and ways to be successful. But we have to have a diverse uh, uh, encatchment of people who are participating in these opportunities. So I love what is going on specifically with Boston Scientific through the Boost program, which originated uh, by, by uh, Chris Reese and Tanjua Jones. And now uh, MS, um, MSC is, is, is pairing up and offering scholarships to qualified uh, black or African Americans who companies see potential in, but they need that boost or that step forward to help them go down the road of being uh, the next region manager, the next territory manager of the year, the next president. That's vitally important. The reason I think it's so important that the medical sales college is offering scholarships uh, to black or African American employees to help them start down their path in med device is because it offers them insight to this business. Before I became a med device professional, I had no idea the business even existed. And many people who look like me also don't know even now in, in 2021. So I think this partnership will be extremely beneficial and will grow in our talent pool of diverse, qualified people down the line. So that's exactly the goal, James. I, I couldn't agree more. And I certainly, you know, but, and not to even compare myself to, to, to that scenario because I'm not a minority, but in growing up in, in rural West Virginia, I had no idea of what the medical sales industry was all about. And, and I was just very fortunate that, that I got in and, and was able to you know, you know, enter the, the business and it has been life changing. I, I've shared that story and it's the reason that I came to medical sales college is I wanted to introduce this opportunity to others um, who are aspiring to grow in their careers because it, it has changed the lives of my family. It's changed the lives of, of my children, you know, and, and just the opportunities that we've had over these 25 plus years, the people we've met, the people we've served, the communities for which we've lived in and contributed to and helped to shape and change. 
all is the the result of of the blessings that we have seen from you know medical sales and, yeah. and the industry itself and so i have a real passion about introducing this and really bringing this to a de and i offering and um you know i know we've we've had a, a partnership with conmed and now with Boston Scientific, we are moving into other companies as well because it's not. A, it, it's really about let let's get this message out there. Let's sure. let's introduce this and make sure that that uh, uh, that this industry is well known so that we you and I can serve as mentors. We can help others get into the business and change lives, not only their own but their families and others for generations to come with the opportunities that this industry offers. Yeah, listen, John, I completely agree. And I, as you're speaking, I thought about uh, my early days in, in this line of work and realizing that the customer base was extremely diverse. But when I would go to a national sales meeting or uh, a group function, there would be not as much diversity. So I, I think that the, the thinking that you have and, and Medical Sales College has and, and other entities of m helping this business be more diverse will only benefit the companies the individuals, because oftentimes, let's just be honest, uh, people appreciate commonality. And that commonality oftentimes bonds people. And, and, and if we can grow in our ability to have diverse, talented people who will be a benefit to a company, uh, participate in med device, uh, participate in, in the medical sales college, it's only going to help strengthen companies long term and also broaden our ability to make impacts. James, what counsel and advice would you have for someone who is considering you know really beginning their career in medical sales and and who is considering the medical sales college uh, the beauty of the medical sales college is that it i believe that it can trim some of the time that it takes to get into med device away it will give you the opportunity to to hone your skills clinically hone your skills in, in regards to business acumen in regards to sales approaches and you also be put in a pool, which is the major thing, of candidates where people who are hiring can see you. That's what's missing. It's the connection for people who actually have the job opportunities. So to me, if I were to go back years back in, in my career and I, I knew about an opportunity like Medical Sales College, I would be all in. That's awesome. That's awesome. James, we really appreciate your, uh, your time today and being with us here in the studios. And uh, certainly for those of you who would like to connect to James and uh, get to know him, look him up on LinkedIn, uh, James Watkins at Boston Scientific, National Marketing, Marketing Manager, Manager yeah. for, uh, for Watchman. James, thank you. Thank my you. Friend, we're thrilled to have you. Thank you. Best of success, my brother. <laughs> I appreciate it. Same All to right. you. Thanks for tuning in to Medical Sales Live. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel for the latest in all things medical sales.